Howdy, Saints. Uh, you know, y'all have heard me speak and saying that when when God uses you as one to teach and speak his word to the saints, uh, you are gifted with an, an eye, ears, uh, nose, and mouth as well. And, and even all the five senses are, are different in us. And, and, and God can speak to us as we see in his word through anything. I mean, if he can use a jackass, you know. <laughs> All right, this. Uh, I am all about my yard. Uh, used to be not as much now, but I'm still about my yard. Uh, I It's not for me anymore as more now as it is for my dogs. So I decided uh, a few weeks ago, because the rain has kind of slowed down, that I wasn't going to mow my yard. I was just going to let it grow, and it's nice and thick, and the, the dogs enjoy going out there laying on it. It's like a big old car, but you can go out there and walk barefoot on it, man. It is so nice. And what I was going to do was I was going to raise my lawnmower wheels all the way up, you know, raise as high as it could go, and I was just going to top it off on that last cut. I am just going to top it off. That's all that trash grass we call Johnson weeds and stuff grows up. I was going to top it and let it go through the... the the, the season where it don't grow, the fall, late fall or the winter, I was going to let it go through that season thick and healthy. Okay. Well, this morning, while I was in there preparing to cook, the wife said, Dennis is out there mowing their yard. Now, Dennis is a man that lives behind me. Now, Dennis don't talk about God much. Uh, he, he just, he's not, he, Dennis ain't really a believer. Uh, I take that back. He might be a believer uh, in his his fashion. I don't know, uh, but is he a disciple? No, no. So, but but Dennis is one of them guys that he'll do anything to work for you, even if he sees it and he's done. He won't he won't even come over and ask you, "Hey, do you want me?" He'll just do it. Now, the reason I didn't want to cut my grass, and I'm going to show you why, is because you see my neighbor's grass here. You see how it blooms weird? I didn't, I didn't want my yard looking like that. And I wanted my dogs to have that thick carpet grass to lay on, you know, because they enjoy it. I can't walk across that stuff barefooted, but I could walk across mine. Well, like I said, Dennis come over and cut my grass. And he has a riding lawnmower, so he cut it. And if you'll see, I have grass cutting on my yard now. Uh, let me walk over here. This is over here. See, I got a whole lot of grass cut. I got the grass cut right here. And, and the back and the backyard's the same. So now that one day topping that I was gonna do is gone, and I have a week's worth of work out here. Now see, I'm not young no more. I can't just get out there and rake up the whole yard one day, and I have to. Do a little bit more. I have to get my push mower out that I wasn't going to use right now and, and, and mow where Dennis didn't uh, because it's a ride on where he can't get and everything. So, so now what I had was an easy day of the last mower just topping it off has turned into basically for me a week of work and it's still it's warm <laughs> and I, you know, so and, and and all I could say was crap. <laughs> oh, crap. Uh, am I thankful that Dennis cut my grass? No. Although he did it, and he was, he didn't, he, he just saw something and he did it. Uh, so, but am I thankful that my yard's cut? No. Well, Brother Anthony was supposed to be thankful in all things. Let me tell you what I am thankful for. I'm thankful that I had the honor and privilege to know a man like Dennis. You know, there's a lot of people that go their whole life, and I mean their whole life, without getting to meet a person such as Dennis. One that will do anything for you, one that never asks for anything in return, one that sees something needs to get done, he'll just do it. 
one. I mean, he's he's a, a really, really exceptional individual that we find out in this world that is usually all about their sales. If God could snatch a hold of Dennis, well, Brother Andy, do you talk to Dennis about God? All right, let me tell you. Now, the other day I spoke on this, and if you didn't hear it, I'm going to say it again uh, because it, it, it tells me everything. We had been gone without hot water in this house for almost a month. I've never asked my son-in-law for nothing on him for 10 years, never asked him for nothing. But the other day, I decided, okay, I'm going to call up Peter, and I'm going to ask him if he have a low charge account so I can get a water heater, and because, see, we can pay the world. When a brother does something for you, you're not supposed to expect anything back. And the wife asked me, well, you know, I don't understand. How can you can't, you know, so, and Peter said, no, but how about you let me buy it? And you pay me back. Well, I said, okay. Even though my spirit was uneasy about that, I said, okay. The wife couldn't understand. Well, you could, you, we're paying for the house. I said, well, that's paying for the world. We're not supposed to pay another brother for something like that. Scripture said that. That's just the way it is. A uh, brother or sister should do something for a brother or sister and never expect anything back. If you can uh, 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 supply a need, then you're just supposed to supply a need and leave it. So, they brought it out here, and as I said in the other one, me and Peter got to talking, and, and he told me, he said, look, that water heater, you don't owe me a penny. And I, I, I said, but Peter, no, no, I don't want nobody to buy nothing for me. I'll, uh, you know, uh, just, I, I'll pay you back on the water heater. And he said, no, listen. A week or something ago, somebody came up, and like I said, he's a little pastor out here. A week ago, somebody came up and gave me a check for $500 to do something with this. So a week and a half ago or such, God paid for your water heater. Now, see, I, like I said, I've never asked Peter for nothing. Now, the all 10 years plus I've known him, the one time God says, okay, call Peter. Let's try to work. Let's just, 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 just call Peter. So I go, I call Peter. So I call Peter, and then look at this. God, God. God said, look, I've already, this already been took care of a week or something ahead. I put it on somebody's heart that had some money, had extra, and had an abundance. And, and they gave it to Peter. Peter didn't go out and buy his wife and the family a bunch of team on steaks and ribeyes. He didn't go out and, 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 and all this other stuff. He put it and he set it aside when a knee came up. Knee come up, look at that. This is God. So I was telling Dennis about this the other day because he's helping me. I, I've been Dennis's ear a lot because Dennis knows a lot. So I ask him questions. We call it being in an ear. <coughs> and Dennis told me a story afterwards. Years ago, we had a bad winter around here and, and electricity and all this. And they, they, you know, if you don't pay your bill, you get it cut off. Well, Dennis couldn't work. The electricity bill got high because it was cold and he all electric, so it got high. It was like thirty five hundred dollars, you know. So they made a deal with Dennis. Look, you pay such amount, it's like forty bucks, eighty bucks a month. We're gonna put forty to your bill and forty to your old bill until we get this took care of. And Dennis said, "Okay, I can do that." When he went back to work, now a couple months later, Dennis went up there to pay his eighty bucks, and he paid the bill and 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 and. He was begging the receipt, you know, like they'd been giving him, and, and they told Dennis, they said, well, we're putting this whole thing on your bill. I mean, on, on, on your regular month bill. You're, you're, that's it. Won't be no, you don't need to make payments no more. Dennis said, what do you mean? That's $3,500. I know I ain't paid off. And, and Dennis told me this. Somebody had went up there to their company, paid off his entire $3,500 at electric bill, told the electric company not to tell him who did it. Now, Dennis told me that story. I said, I said, so, I said, Dennis, man, y'all, are you hearing God? Are you listening to him? He brought that in remembrance of you to tell me after I told you what he's done for me. See, that's God taking care of me. God's trying to get your attention. Now, if he can do that, Dennis, I'm telling you, he can do some wonderful work. So, <laughs> the, 
there should always be, without exception. Now, not, not for everyone, because everyone has it, got that understanding. Everyone doesn't have all the same gifts. Now, let me rephrase that. We all have the same gifts, as in there are these spiritual gifts. Every one of us got them. But everyone hasn't been uh, schooled as to when, where, and how to use them. But every one of us has got them. The apostles have no more power than I have accessible to me. You know, we look at we look at the Lord and, and we gotta remember he was tempted in everything just like us. Yet he sinned not. We look at the apostles that that were sinners, became saved by grace, and dwelled with the Holy Spirit while they was hiding out in the upper room because I'm gonna tell you something, they was they was they was it was they was hiding, okay? They was fearful. God Empire stepped out and them that first speaking that, that Peter we see done, wow, they <laughs> no, they weren't a coward no more, were they? So we all and we're to do greater this is nothing. Jesus said, you're going to do greater things than me. I want you to understand. I really hope, if you don't, you really ought to say, okay, I don't understand it. And there's nothing I'm saying you don't understand it. But God, I don't understand it. When your son told us, we will do greater things than him. That's because he's going to go. How? <laughs> His old brother Andy <laughs> How that old fisherman Peter, oh, how, with them uneducated people, how and what does that even mean? We're going to do greater things than the Lord God Jesus Christ did while he walked this earth. Brothers and sisters, that's one of the things Paul said, I still want to know more power about this resurrection thing. See, you really, a lot of them don't, a lot of, a lot, a lot of you saints don't understand this. Y'all really don't know who you are. Oh, I'm a Christian. Y'all are so much more and called to be so much more than a Christian. And that's what hurts me. You know, this is my prayer for each and every one of y'all. This is my prayer for each and every one of y'all. <coughs> Grace and peace and all that be multiplied. Amen. Uh, all those things needful for your growth and maturity. Amen. This is what I pray for every saint. That your heart becomes that heart that aches not what you, it's a spiritual ache, but you feel it physically. I'm telling you that your heart aches when you see a brother or sister in Christ speak to feet. You should break when you speak to feet. I'm hoping you don't. But when somebody else speaks to feet in their lives, I, I can't. I don't know. I, when you see a brother Stitcher use God's word in an incorrect manner, I pray that your heart becomes so sensitive to the word of God and the Holy Spirit that it, it when you when you see it or hear it, you oh God, it hurts, it hurts. I I pray that your spirit just gets all flustered to where it 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 it, it hurts you physically. From that spiritual sorrow, just to see or hear another brother or sister use the word of God incorrectly. 
Piano pray for y'all like a lot of y'all pray for others. And I don't pray. I, I haven't prayed like the Christians prayed in a long time. Because they pray for new jobs, new cars, and all kinds of all just all they pray so amiss. I, and see, that was the thing I asked God. I don't want. To, I don't want to be that man again that prays amiss. I don't want to be that man that prays ineffectively. I don't want to be that man. When I pray, I, I want it to be effectual. I want to know that I've done my part as intercessory. God's going to do his part. He's just waiting on you to do yours. It ain't that God answered prayer in his own time. Look, God says he answered them like that. It's a done deal. It's not in his time. Most of the time that your prayers, you're still waiting on your prayers, it's because there's something wrong with, with an issue of your heart. And I'm getting off topic here. I'll get, pray, I'll get to teaching on the doctrine of prayer that has been so, so, so adulterated by man's theologies. Let me get back. Being thankful in all things. Perfect example today for God for me to speak to y'all. I'm not thankful my grass was mowed, whereas a lot of people would be, but I'm not. I didn't want it mowed. It's created more work for me now than I had planned. I'm thankful because I have been given the privilege when, when God moved us here in this house. This house right here. That man Dennis already lived behind me. I'm thankful that God put me in a place to where I got to meet and, and a man like that. So a lot of people, like I said, they'll live their whole life and they'll never meet someone like Dennis. And for that, brothers and sisters, I see that I am thankful for. So, Hey, I love y'all. I'm always praying for you, and I'll see y'all next time around.